Hello everyone, my name is Carla Rodriguez and this is my John Wood Triptych in which I will be talking about painting. I decided to select this type of art form because it is my favorite type of art. I love to go to museums and analyze paintings, trying to figure out the meaning behind each artwork. Painting has been a method of telling stories, passing traditions, and defining cultures since the beginning of humanity. It is used to tell stories, portray important historical moments, combat social injustices, express religious ideology, and more. Although it appears to be a simple art form, in reality it takes many years and much practice to achieve the desired results and paint something extraordinary. These are the reasons why I chose to present about this art form. The artistic periods that I chose to present in this project are all from Western art from 1600 to 1800. The first one is Baroque art from 1600 to 1700. The second one Neoclassicism from 1765 to 1850. The third one Romanticism from 1765 to 1850. And the last one Realism from 1840 to 1880. I chose these four artistic movements because they represent some of the most important periods of time in the history of art. Although each period follows the previous one quite continuously, they each have specific characteristics that define each movement, each movement from the others. Although each movement uses the same medium, each period conveys different themes using different techniques. The first artistic period is Baroque art. Baroque was a reaction against the artificial stylization of mannerism. It spread throughout Europe during the 17th century. Among the greatest Baroque masters were the Italian painter Caravaggio, the sculptor Bernini, the Flemish artist Rubens, Velázquez from Spain, and Rembrandt, the greatest of all Dutch painters. Baroque art is identified by realistic subjects that depict spectacular action and generate powerful emotions. Religious, mystical, and historical subjects, which were often propaganda for the church or state, were brought to life with characters in contemporary clothing by naturalistic painting of outstanding virtuosity, dramatic lighting, and bold asymmetric and diagonal compositions. One example of Baroque art is the painting David with the Head of Goliath that was painted by Caravaggio in 1610. This painting shows some of the characteristics of the Baroque period. We can see the strong emphasis on the emotion shown by David, who has a compassionate look filled with remorse. The brightness on David's face, in contrast with the rest of the painting, is an example of the dramatic lighting used by the rope painters. The second artistic period is Neoclassicism from 1765 to 1850. Neoclassicism was also known as the Age of Enlightenment, and political, social, and cultural revolution were in the air. Artists needed serious art for serious times, and once again, they looked back to the art of antiquity as their model. Inspired by the archaeological discoveries at Herculaneum and Pompeii, neoclassicism had a historical accuracy that earlier classical revivals lacked. Historical scenes of heroism and virtue were used as patriotic propaganda or allegories on contemporary circumstances. Jacques-Louis David and Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres were the outstanding virtuosos of neo neoclassical painting. One example of an artwork during this artistic movement is Napoleon Crossing the Alps, painted by Jacques-Louis David in 1801. This painting depicts Napoleon and his troops crossing the Alps in a military campaign against the Austrians, which ended in their defeat in June at the Battle of Marengo. We can see some of the characteristics of the neoclassical period because this painting represents a serious historical moment when France was emerging as a great power once more after a decade of terror and uncertainty. It also serves as a propaganda to portray Napoleon as the hero of the story, emphasizing his heroism and virtue. The third artistic period is Romanticism. From 1765 to 1850, Romanticism was characterized by its emphasis on emotion and individualism as well as glorification of the past and nature preferring the medieval rather than the classical. It was partly a reaction to the Industrial Revolution, the aristocratic social and political norms of the Age of Enlightenment, and the scientific rationalization of nature. All of this was achieved through spectacular painting technique and the choice of emotive and sensual subjects, which often commemorated dramatic contemporary and historical events. In France, Delacroix and Géricault were the pioneers of Romanticism, in England, it was Turner and Constable. In Germany, Caspar David Friedrich 
and in Spain, Goya. One example of a romantic painting is the Fighting Temeraire, painted by Turner in 1839. For many Britons, Temeraire was a powerful reminder of their nation's long history of military success and a living connection to the heroes of the Napoleonic Wars. Its disassembly signaled the end of a historical era. We can see some of the characteristics of Romanticism, such as Turner celebrating Temeraire's historic past by commemorating a, a historical event and criticizing a technological change, technological change which had already begun to affect the modern day life in a more profound way than any battle. Turner's specific painting techniques used shades of gr white, gray, and brown, making the boat look almost like a ghost ship. This painting represents an allegory and about how the new steam power of the Industrial Revolution quickly replaced history and tradition. The fourth and last artistic period is realism from 1840 to 1880. Realism was a French style of painting that focused on the everyday reality of a subject. Realism revolted against the exotic subject matter and exaggerated emotionalism and drama of the Romantic movement. It instead sought to portray real and typical contemporary people and situations with truth and accuracy and not avoiding unpleasant or sordid aspects of life. Artists such as Millet, Corot, Corbet, and Manet were the pioneers of realism. The Gleaners is a clear example of realism. It features three peasant women of the rural working class, prominently in the foreground, stooping to glean the last scraps of a wheat harvest. Their gaze does not meet the viewer, and their faces are obscured. Millet has chosen to center the women and paint them with their greater contrast. The earthy figures blend into the color of the piece, ingraining them well into the scene. Though the misalignment of vanishing points among the three women, and in particular, never aligning with the central focus of the background, Malay conveys the message that while the lowest class women occupy the same canvas of the abundance depicted in the background, they will never be a part of that actual physical abundance. They occupy, they occupy their own space layered on top of another space, in both the painting and in real life. This is a commentary on the lower class's inaccessibility to upward mobility. We have reached the end of the presentation. Hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.